Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a Ducati-inspired ceramic watch from Tudor. This is the Tudor Fast Rider Black Shield model launched in 2013, just as Tudor was relaunching itself in the United States market. So the case is a combination of black ceramic and stainless steel. It measures 42 millimeters in diameter, 14.6 millimeters thick, and from lug to lug, 49.1 millimeters with a broad 24 millimeter spacing between the lugs. The watch sits easily on my wrist. You can see it is big, but comfortable. I wouldn't wear it on a wrist much smaller than mine. I'd say the lower limit is probably 15 centimeters circumference, but it does fit well. It looks good, and provided you have some patience, uh, you can see the time. The watch, of course, is paired with 150 meter water resistance and a full rubber strap, so you can absolutely take this swimming. You can see the strap is quasi-integrated as there's an end link insert on the end of the case, so there's no big gap between strap and case. The strap is also very thick, so it should have a long life. There's a chevron-like striation on the bottom, a system designed to aggress against the wrist and hold the strap in place and hold the watch secure. We have a Tudor Shield logo that pops open to release a single fold deployant clasp. You can see it is made of stainless steel and blackened. We have here ceramic pin snaps so that over time the steel clamshell lock can't wear down the pin snaps. The pin snaps are effectively eternal. They will retain their tight tolerances over time. The case features a shield on the flank inspired by the Ducati logo and it's also a pusher adjuster. It's well hidden in plain sight but this watch comes with a pusher adjuster that can be used to adjust the date and it's done using this little impulse button on the flank. The bezel is sunken into the lug hoods. As you can see the bezel actually sits lower than the peaks of the lugs. This is a trick often used by watch designers to create longer, more flowing lug profiles without creating an excessively thick watch. Because if you just stuck the bezel entirely on top of the lugs, you'd get these lovely long lugs, but then you'd have a thicker watch. Uh, by the same token, if you were just to expand the bezel out, you would wind up with short, stubby lugs. Everything is a matte finish. It's a media blasted style finish. The lugs Though they sprout from a massive case, are actually quite tapered and elegant at their end. We have black pump style pushers. We have a crown with the Tudor, not Ducati, but Tudor shield. And it is a screw down. It is made of steel, like the case back and the clasp. The dial is black. It has a Rayho outboard that can be used at, to judge your chronograph seconds, fractions of seconds, and your minutes. We have registers for constant seconds, chronograph hours, and chronograph minutes. And we have a date window. And because this is the Valju 7. 753 variant of the 7750. Normally, the registers are like this at 12 and 9 and 6. Well, by getting this balanced layout, you have a traditional chronograph aesthetic, but you lose the quick set mechanism. That's why it uses a pusher adjuster for the date, even though the 7750 has a quick set. Now, you can see the bezel uses a tachymeter scale. It's actually engraved. It's a little bit difficult to see on camera, but it's more evident in person. And you can use the chronograph seconds hand in conjunction with that scale to gauge the speed of, say, a race car or a racing motorcycle over a kilometer. Case back is fairly simple. Satinated blackened and steel. Underneath, we have that 7753 unidirectional automatic winding, 46 hour power reserve in this variant, 25 pivot joules, 4 hertz beat rate, it features stop seconds, a pusher actuated quick set system, and it uses a oscillating pinion lateral clutch and a cam system for operation. So the cam is actually quite well tuned. Modern ETA is wonderfully crisp to the point where this is as satisfying as, say, the column wheel on an FPGA 1185. And because it uses an oscillating pinion rather than a conventional lateral clutch, when you start the chronograph, there's no pronounced jump. If you press and hold, it's designed to be an almost seamless engagement. It's not quite as perfect as a vertical clutch, but you could see that the jump when it's there is minuscule. And many times, like right there, there is no jump at all. So a more precise means of building a lateral clutch chronograph, the oscillating pinion, where else will you see that? Well, you'll see it on FP Journ chronographs. Let's do a quick loom shot here. The watch is loomed, but take heed. This is one for the bright of daylight. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.